Hi, my name is Frank, and you're watching video one of two for isomers. And um, so th in this video, I want to talk to you about how to differentiate between constitutional isomers, identical isomers, uh, not identical isomers, identical molecules, um, enantiomers, and diastereomers. Because I know a lot of people have trouble differentiating them. So when you do isomer problems, you want to go through this checklist first. Uh, the first thing you want to do is the same formula check to make sure that they're isomers in the first place because isomers are molecules that have the same chemical formula but they have different structural arrangements usually. So um, the first one is, so yeah, the first check is same formula to see if they're in isomers in the first place. The second check is the constitutional check. Uh, are all the atoms bonded to the same uh, uh, carbons and whatnot? This might not seem so clear right now, but I'll show you later, don't worry about it. Um, the identical molecule check. You want to make sure if your molecules are actually just identical, because if they're identical, then it's not even an isomer anymore. Um, and then the, next, the next check you want to check is the enantiomer check, which you do after that the identical check. Um, and this one, you basically see if your molecule is a mirror image. And then uh, enantiomers are basically molecules with um, uh, molecules that are mirror images of each other, but they're not superimposable, meaning that. Uh, when you hear it's superimposable, just think of identical. Because um, if you look at this example of my hand, this is my left hand basically, and if you have a mold for it, uh, if you're looking for a uh, imposable, superimposable molecule, it'll have to fit in perfectly. And you see on my right hand, no matter what I do, it can't fit into this mold perfectly. Some of you might be saying, why don't you just flip it like this? But if I flip it like this, right, um, before I had my, my nails facing you guys, if I took it like this, my hand would fit in, but the nails wouldn't be fixing you anymore. So that's why it's not superimposable, because it will look different. And once again, yeah, because this doesn't look like this. Okay, so next is diastereomers. These guys are basically like leftovers. So if they're not constitutional isomers, not identical molecules, not enantiomers, then they must be diastereomers. Okay? Uh, the reason why I left them as last is because they're the hardest to identify. So if you just check off that they're not any of these, then they have to be diastereomers. So it's nice and easy. Okay, so let's do this molecule right here. Um, first things first, let's do the same formula check, just to make sure they're even isomers in the first place. So let's get the number of carbons. Uh, number of carbons, oh, this one is one carbon, two carbon, three carbons, four carbons, five carbons. That's the five carbons. And then nitrogens, there is one here. Okay. Hydrogens, there is one, two, three, four, five, so five hydrogens. Okay, and then over here, let's do the same thing. Carbon check, we have one, two, three, four, five. So it looks like that they are most likely isomers just based on that. Now let's see, nitrogen check, there is one nitrogen here. And then let's do our hydrogen check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, look at that. So because of this difference right here, um, they're not even isomers in the first place. And you're done. They're just not the same. Okay, so now um, let's look at these two molecules here. Uh, you can pause your video and um, try and do these two. Go through these checks and then come back. Okay, so um, let's see. Same formula check because uh, they have the same number of carbons, they look the same already, and they have the same number of chlorines, they have the same formula, so that means they are isomers for sure. Uh, are they constitutionally different? No, not really, because um, the chlorines attach to the tip here, the chlorines attach to the tip here, and the same is true for here and here. If you count the bond distance from each other, um, one bond, two bond, three bond, four bond, five bonds, you have a chlorine chlorine here, uh, one bond, two bond, three bond, four bond, five bonds, you have chlorine there, one bond, two bond, three bonds, four bonds, five bonds, chlorine, so their constitution is the same, uh, are they identical now? So the thing is that they actually are identical, and if you can't see it, there's two ways where you can make it identical, one is if you take this molecule and you literally just pull it out, and then you flip it, it'll be identical, and the second way you can do it is if you pull this molecule out, and you just flip it like this. Because if you flip it like this, chlorine's now going to be right here. Pull it out, you flip it, chlorine's going to be right here. And then 
your whole uh, double cyclohexane kind of molecule would just be flipped like this. Um, okay, so that's this molecule here. They are identical. Okay, so now let's look at these two molecules over here. So they look about the same, right? We have the same number of carbons, the same number of fluorines, so that reaffirms the uh, same formula check. So they are isomers. Uh, they're constitutionally the same. It looks like it, right? Because this fluorine is connected to a carbon that's, um, that has a neighboring fluorine right here. The same is true here. There's a double one here, no one is there, nothing moved. So they are constitutionally the same. Are they identical now? Um, some of you might think that they're not identical, and you might think that they're just, um, they might be an antimer or something, because you might think that if you just uh, flip it like this, right, then you'll get this molecule. And then these two guys look like they're mirror images, right? And you might think that they're antimers. But the second part of the definition of an antimer is that uh, they're non superimposable, meaning also in the meaning that they're not identical. So this molecule is actually identical to this one here. And what you can do is you can literally just pull it out and then you flip it. When you flip it, what's in the back now will come to the front. Let me just show you that in a molecule form. I mean, with a plot of paper. Okay, so uh, in this. Uh, your molecule starting out is like this, right? The two fluorines are coming at you. And this molecule here, the two fluorines are facing into the board away from you. So what happens is you can just kind of pull it out and just flip it. And it'll be the same as this one. And then there's nothing here that's going into or out of the plane or, uh, per se. So that's why those, they're identical molecules. Okay? And not in antimers. Okay, now we're going to take a look at these two molecules here, and I'm probably getting a little tired, so just bear with me. So they look kind of the same, right? Because they both have a wedge and they both have a dash. But, um, so they look the same, so they have the same chemical formula already. Are they constitutionally the same? Uh, yes, so they are not constitutional isomers, because constitutional isomers have different chemical, uh, different structures, different constitutions. Um, are they identical? See, is there any way we can make this molecule superimposed onto this one here? Uh, nope, because no matter how you turn it, no matter how you rotate it, flip it, whatever you, you can think of, they'll never match up because the wedge ones here and the dash ones here. And if you go then, they're not identical. They're not identical molecules. Let's see. Next, are they enantiomers? When you draw a line down the middle for the mirror, you can see that they're perfectly mirror images of each other. Wedge, wedge, dash, dash. And then, because we already did the, did the identical check, we know that no matter what, this molecule can't superimpose onto this molecule, so it's not the same molecule. So it can't be an identical molecule. And then, it has a mirror image, so that's the definition of an antimer. It has a mirror image, and it's not superimposable. Okay, and then you don't have to worry about whether or not it's a diastere. Okay, I hope that helps. Okay, so for this one here, it looks almost exactly the same, but the hydrogen here is facing up, and the hydrogen here is going down. So, uh, let's see. We basically can do the same formula check and just see that it's the same molecule. Let me shift this in. But basically, because um, they're all, this is all carbons, all carbons, oxygen, 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 carbon, carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen, same thing. So they are isomers. Uh, constitutionally, they are the same because uh, every single. Um, Atom is bonded to the same corresponding atom, atom in both examples here. Oxygen bonded to this carbon here, and oxygen is bonded to this carbon here. Nothing is like structurally or constitutionally different. Uh, next, you do the identical check. So is there any way we can manipulate this molecule so that it'll look like this? Uh, not by moving anything, but by like lifting it up and like rotating or like flipping. There's like no way you can actually do that. So it's not identical. Next, is it an enantiomer? So we know that if it's not identical, it's already not superimposable, meaning that it's not, it can't just like, um, it can't, if, if we had a mold for this molecule here, this molecule can't just like lay on top of it no matter what, because this piece here is never going to fit into this piece of the mold. Okay? So is there any way we can get like, the, the other aspect of enantiomers is that um, there's a, okay, so you know that it's not superimposable. So that means that it could be an antimer now, because an antimer is a mirror image that are superimposable. So now we just gotta look for a mirror image. So let's go down here. 
actually. Okay. So let's see. Um, if you flip this around, right, the molecules still wouldn't be mirror images because if, if you flipped it around, the oxygen would be here, but the hydrogen would still be going down. So that's not a mirror image to this molecule here. Um, yeah, if you turn it like this, it wouldn't work. If you turn it like this, it wouldn't work. There's no way there are mirror images no matter what. So, non-anti-mirror, so it's a dice Okay?